Hello everyone and welcome back to Elise Little Things. Um, in today's live stream I'm going to design a vintage coffee grinder. Um, as you can see in this snapshot that I have here, just a second, um, as you can see in this snapshot of this design um, I did here, that's what we're going to design. I already designed it and I just took a snapshot a snapshot of the design um, of it being finished so I can then show you guys how I approach this design on ZBrush. So I'm just going to start this design from beginning from scratch on ZBrush and you can just follow along and, and just watch. So we're going to start this design then. I'll just quickly import this onto ZBrush. So that's what we're going to de uh, that's what we're going to design. Um, and I designed this a few days ago on ZBrush. So that's the snapshot of the design that we're going to do. So let's get started then. So how is everyone today? Right, I'm first going to start with the coffee shape of the grinder. So I'm starting with a cube. So I just in imported a cube 3D and now I'm just going to put it to the size that I want for this grinder. And I was looking online at some of the sizes and I saw one online. So I'm just going to take 13.3 millimeters in size. Because obviously it has to be scaled to dollhouse size. So I have to divide it by 12. So that's the size that I'm going to do now. Just a bit more. Okay, that's has got our size. So now we're going to start um, getting the shape together for this. So we're going to start um, with Z Modeler tool, which is the tool that I normally start with with creating my designs. And we're going to insert multi edge loops. And using the masking tool and the gizmo just to try and shape it by scaling or you can use even the transpose tool on Z modeler. So I'm just going to roughly take my time and just try to get the shape that I had that I had in this design.
set and single So we're just trying to get that shape up here. Suppose just to try and get the shape that we want. Maybe bring this bit a bit more out. Okay, now we will. And just turn this. Okay, um, next we will insert more lines just to try and keep the shape together. At each side. So we roughly get the shape and then we're just going to insert more lines. And the lines just keep the shape of the design that you want to keep it sharper and more harder um, surface faces. So when I go like that, you can see that the shape is coming together a bit more. Also, I like to put them in the corners. You can maybe use crease for this, but I'm, I'm just doing it this way. Well, I want mine a bit more harder around the edges. But you could, you don't need to put the lines. You could just delete them and have rounder edges like that, which I think I might actually do that. But that's just an option that you can insert the lines just to get the more squared edges on the design. So 
So I quite like that roundness that we have. So it's just all about just roughly getting the shape that you want. And just using the gizmo and transpose. So say that that's a roughly the shape that we want. I might actually insert a line here. Maybe one above it. Like that. Okay, so we have roughly the shape that we want. I see I've not gotten rid of this part. Because that side is a bit more round, so... I think that's that. Okay. So we'll put this in a folder and we'll call it coffee grinder just to keep everything together so it's tidier in folders. Okay. So next we will then start with the little drawer where you can put the little coffee beans in it, coffee seeds, uh, okay, like I said as well you can also make this more harder surface as well but I'm just going to keep it round because I quite like it in this kind of way for the design so next we'll do the drawer, we'll insert, we will insert a cube 3d polycube sorry it was polycube um and then we will just make this smaller in size and just to the shape that we want for the drawer this is just going to represent a drawer but obviously you can make it into an actual drawer that actually opens like that but instead i'm just going to merge it with the design just to represent a drawer but it's not actually a drawer if you know what I mean so that's what I'm going to do So we're inserting the lines just to keep the shape and again you could actually crease this like that so you have the squared shape that we want. And also I want to sort of taper this at the top. So I'll close this in a bit with Gizmo, just because you can see in this design it's tapered a bit, what I did. So that's what I, that's how I approach that, by just tapering it with Gizmo. So it just kind of represents a drawer. Okay, um, now we will do the handle for it. So for that we will just quickly quick save. It's important to quick save everything because like I said before sometimes ZBrush can crash and you can lose all your work which isn't really good that way but 
it's backed up anyway, so even when it does close, it still has um, your design somehow on ZBrush. Because it could even be here for recent of the work that you've been working on over the past couple of days, weeks, months, and it can be up here. But it's better to quick save everything, so everything's all quick saved here. So you can just open it up when you're on ZBrush. So now we will insert Cylinder 3D again. We'll insert that and we will then just bring this out and just try and shape it and place it where we want it to be placed on this. So we will insert, go to edge, and for this we will insert an interactive elevation because we want to raise this up as a handle. So it's a bit like that. We might actually delete this one. Slide this one down. And insert elevation and just bring this out a bit so it's a bit like that of the shape for the handle and a single edge loop and we'll just insert the lines again just to keep the shape together And it's important to put it at the bottom to put a few because it will keep the nice um, shape at the bottom of the design so it's nice and flat. Okay, so dynamic. And as you can see, we have this roundness going on here and I don't actually want that. So I'm just going to delete some of the polygroups and polygroups is this, these different colours that you see, that it's green, blue, that's what you call polygroups. Um, and that's separate faces that are on a design that you can select and delete and manipulate and do different things with it. And just tweak them. So, as you can see here, I've selected this. And by going, right there, by going to this polygroup, in polygroup all and with the alt the alt key and then selecting all of these and then selecting these you can then change them to different polygroups different colors so they're separate from the rest and then you can delete polygroup all and just delete the middle like that it's quite good because you can do so many different things there's so many options like i said you can use the mask tool, you can delete, you can crease, you can slide the lines, you can Q-mesh things up like this, like Q-mesh, up like that. You can do different things to your design, so it's really handy. So we're going to close it again with convex hole, so it's flatter at the top. So it's a bit like that, it's not as visible, but you could even go further with this. Um, you could even delete this one by selecting it and delete and then close like that so it's like that it's a bit more flatter at the top which I quite like so I think that is good enough So it's like that. You can make it bigger, smaller. So that's roughly what I think is good. So back to this design. Um, there, back to this design. Um, and I'm going to select this 
polygroup and it will change to a different colour because I'm selecting it. And then I'm going to use the right there. Hue mesh. And we're just going to Click save and um, just going to select all again. And we're just going to raise this one up so it's separate, so we can create a separate sub tool from this. You'll see in the minute what I mean by this. Um, I've got everything. Okay, so so by this, I'm now going to use activate symmetry. So I have symmetry in both sides, and we're going to use the mask tool just to select areas that we want to change and shape. And then we're going to reverse the mask and use gizmo with symmetry off and use gizmo and make sure everything's centered and then we're just going to use the yellow square which pushes everything inwards or outwards whatever shape that you want so i'm just going to push it inwards And then I'm going to use the Q mesh to push this upwards a bit. So it's like a little mat for the coffee grinder bowl to sit on top. Like you can see in this picture, I have an extra an extra step up there. You can even put that in a different colour or different material, but it's just to add an extra step onto this. You don't need to obviously add that, but I just thought it made it look a bit more fancier so it's not like boring and you can do different kind of shapes and stuff on this. It doesn't even need to be this shape, it could be a star, it could be a flower, it could be anything, but this is just to give you an idea of what you can approach on ZBrush with this. Okay, um, so you don't have to push it right in. So it's small, just slightly, just a bit. And then we're then going to put it so it's touching the surface of this one. And then we're going to use crease right there, crease PG, which will give us the option to get all the, oh, like that there. Yeah, which will give us the option to create nice hard edges around this but leaving the corners softer if you know what I mean as you can see here that it's really crisp and sharp at the top and at the bottom but at the corners it's really soft so that's what um, crease PG does it creases um, different polygroups so it does by PG, which means polygroups. And now you can then put activate symmetry back on and you can use the move brush just to try to shape this design a bit more to whatever shape that you want. I'm just going to keep it to the shape that I have, but I'm just going to shape it a bit more so it's more round in the corners, the edges.
You can create a fancy design on it, you can shape it, you can even sculpt on it to create a nice Art Nouveau or Rococo, whatever detail that you basically want with all the brushes that you have here, like the crack brush, um, snake to move the design, so this is what the snake tool does. It makes everything more exaggerated um, and also damn standard, which lets you sculpt on the surface, but you can only see that when I apply the dynamics because right now I'm still using Z Modeler, but there's so many options that you can do on this. It's actually mind blowing. Like I've been using ZBrush for a couple of years actually, and I'm still learning things on this software because it's a limitless software. There's so much you can learn on this. And it's also about remembering where all the tools are on the interface, remembering where everything is. But it's like that with every software though. It just takes time and you just need to get used to it. I quite like this shape. It's quite fun looking so. I like this one. You just make it a bit thicker so it looks like there's actually something sitting on the surface of this. Okay. So next I think we will then start with the bowl. So I'll put this in a um, folder. Okay, so we'll start with the bowl then. So we'll insert, you could insert um, a sphere 3D or you could insert <coughs> a cylinder 3D. But I'm going to insert a cylinder 3D for this one. And you're just going to scale it up. And again, just trying to get the shape of the bowl that we want, that we've roughly kind of done here. It doesn't need to be exactly the same, but it's just to give you the idea of how I roughly approached this design in the first place. Also, I was thinking um, in my next videos that I'll do, where I'll be live streaming and more designs that I'll be doing, um, yeah, on the next one, I want to print out this coffee grinder so you can see the physical piece printed on the 3D printer so you can see what it looks like because it is good seeing everything digitally designed on ZBrush seeing how I approach everything but it's also good seeing everything 3D printed and seeing it in real so that's when you can start painting it doing whatever with it basically just for production so I think Next time when I'm live streaming, I will print it out and show you guys on the live stream of what it looks like. So you can see what ZBrush can do basically. So I think that would be a good idea. So I will show you it next time when I'm doing my next live stream. try to do my live streams every Friday. I've kind of gotten into the idea of doing that every Friday. But it might change again, it just depends really. But normally I put this on social media when I'm going to go live a couple of days before it. So that way you are all aware of when I'm live streaming. Okay, so we just deleted the middle of this to create the bowl shape because obviously it's opened inside so you can put the coffee beans inside. So now we're going to insert 
multi multi edge loops and interactive elevation again just to get the the roundness of the bowl that we want you can make it really big so i'm just going to make it roughly like this I really like that shape. Also, this is quite handy because if you get lost and if you're working this way, sometimes I don't see that I'm working from the side and I just still keep sculpting and working. But this is good to turn to the front. It just kind of keeps you on track of where you're at by just moving it up, down, side, side. It's quite good though. So you don't get lost. Because you can also screw up your design by working at the side and you think you're already working at the front. So it's important to make sure everything is centred in the middle of ZBrush. Because if it's not, then it's possible that you can actually ruin your design and you have to start over again or fix the symmetry. So there's a lot of problems with that. Sometimes I still get mixed up with it. So actually I think I'm going to try and create the bottom bit here that you can see on this design. This is quite a cool tool as well. You can use different things here. You can scale it obviously. You can add spotlight, opacity, how sharp you want the design to look or very faded. So it's not like distracting you when you're doing your design. So I may just have it roughly to this size. It's quite good though because you can just import any picture that you have on your computer that you want to download onto this and you can use that as your reference just to keep you on track. So I want to create roughly that sort of shape that I want. And now we will just use the Q mesh and just create the thickness that we want here. Flatten the top as well. insert more lines again just to create the shape of what we want and keep the nice um, sharp edges of it so we will insert multi Also, I think I might actually delete some of these lines. And slide some of them up.
So I want to create that little rim bit at the top, at the top of there. So I want to try and do that. So I'd be just slide, use the slide tool. And have it a bit more raised out. Transpose. Just to bring it a bit more out. Yep. So we just have that little surface bit at the top. Also forgot to say that my um, cocktail shaker set is now available on my shop at least little things on our Etsy shop. I did that on my last live stream and I said um, it would be on the shop and I, I was going to let you guys know when it would be available. So it's now in my shop if you want to go and check it out. So we want to add a little bit of a rim around here at the bottom of it. So I'll Q mesh this out. So we have that little step bit. You could also do it right at the bottom actually, which I think might be better. So we can just slide this down. Like this. And like I said, we can make it more exaggerated. So with transpose. And just bring it more out. Same with this one. I just want to flatten the bottom. You also need to check the the thickness inside as well, which is useful because it's important how thick this is too. Usually that's something that you do at the beginning. This is 0 0.6. Well, it is pretty thick because we have that too, so we could slide maybe that in a bit and just flatten the top. So it's a bit more thickness. I 
It should be fine, like usually it's 0 0.8 I put for thickness, especially for 3D printing because you don't want things being really thin because either, either way they'll not print and it'll just be harder for the printer. I quite like that, but I do want to expose these edges a bit more, so I'll be insert more lines here, just like that. I quite like it like that, so I'll do that. And you can make it a bit smaller too, but remember that will change the thickness, so you're best actually getting the size before the thickness. But This should be fine. So I don't want it too big. I just want it a little bit like half of the, the actual grinder, the coffee grinder. So I think that's maybe a good size. Yeah. So next, I might actually put the text here next. That'll be the next part. So we'll go on into Z plugin, text 3D and vector shapes, and we just go to new text. And you can choose what font that you want, but I'm just gonna keep it simple for this live stream. Um as this live stream is just to kind of show you guys how I approach this design. Um okay, so it's So we're just going to scale this to the size that we want and just place it where we want it to go. There's many different ways you can approach to putting text on a design. But this is just one of the ways. Because you can also do it with faces. Which is um, a whole different approach. So coffee, like I said, you can use different font, it doesn't need to be this font. I'm just going to have it like that. So next, guys, I think it's time to do the middle part, which what we what we have here, and then this part in there. So, we will insert cylinder 3D Chat is very quiet today. Okay, so we're just going to create this part.
and we're going to insert multi multi edge loops and we're just going to mask the bottom so we can taper this out a bit delete this one actually We'll mask the bottom and we're just going to taper this out a bit because we don't just want it just straight down we want it a bit thicker at the bottom so that there's more support for the design because when you're 3d printing it it won't be stable if you just have it straight straight down this will give more support to the design for 3d printing so it won't break basically it won't snap So just like that, and you can just put it to the thickness that you want. And to the length that you want. So I don't want it too high. Maybe roughly to that height. I think that's a good height for us. We can always put it higher later on, but this is just roughly what I think. And just scaling the thickness. It's just like that. And next, I think we will do the little bar that's here. So I'll move this down a bit, this line. And we'll just put this in a different poly group. So it'll have to be a different colour. So I can just select this whole face, this area, without touching the rest. And just Q mesh it out like that. Just slide it up just a little bit. So it's just like that. I actually think I'll maybe actually just slide this down because I want this kind of straight for the other bar bit to go on top. So I will just actually go back with that part before I slid them down. And see, there. So we'll just insert these parts, insert lines, inserting the lines is really help, helpful though because it really does help to keep the shape together. Insert them there. Okay, I think that's has got that part. So now we will start with this bar that's just going up here. And for that, I will just be using insert and cylinder 3D again. 
And with that, I want this to open in the middle so that way it can go inside of that other part. So I want it to open like that so it's like a ring. That should be okay, I think. Yep. And just bring that to the top. And just scale it. And just sort of level it with that. And again, we will just insert the lines just to keep the, the shape going. Just like that and then we will polygroup these ones and just kumish it out Just like that. So it's just coming out and then going up, sort of thing. And we'll just bring this in a bit and then just flatten the top part just like that. Just bring it more out like that. Yep, that's a bit better. Um, just flatten this. It's just about getting the shape basically right of what you want. So now we're just going to insert more lines. Maybe even delete that one. So that way we can insert lines in the middle. Just a bit like that. 
so we have that straight line coming out and then we just insert the lines at each corner just so it's a bit more squared looking one at the end there And now we're just going to move this where we want it. Actually add more lines here. What's important is to try and get it more squared looking. So that's roughly the approach to this. Might push that in a bit more, a bit too long. I might go back until I've moved that part and then just make it smaller, less longer I mean, in length. You can make it, you can move it to any angle that you want, but I'm just going to have it straight like that and then just straight up, or you could have it straight down like that even. Step it up like that I think would be best. Straighten this part first. Also you can change the thickness too. So it's going like that and then it's going up and then to there or it could go up
think I may actually go back with that part. I think I've moved it not the way that I had. Okay, so it's straight out like that and then it's goes up at the side here. And it's all about inserting the lines at the correct corners. So I think that looks a bit better actually. I maybe had too many lines as well because sometimes um, the lines can interfere with the shape. But like I said, you can have it any any shape that you want basically. So it's like that and then it can go down and then into there. So here I'm going to have a bit more of a sharp corner. Just like that. Also maybe crease could work too with this, by creasing the design. Just quickly go back. And I think I will add another line here maybe, just to get that sharpness that I want. Yep, I think that's what we want. So I think I will then add in the sphere at the top of this and then I'll just work around it basically.
and we're just going to add the little sphere shape that's at the top of this coffee grinder. It's like that. You can make it bigger. I actually think I cut too much off of it, so I'm just going to go back a bit. You can make it flatter from the bottom or the top, but I'm just trying to make it flatter at the bottom. Just so it's a bit like that. Okay, I think we will add the little handle bit that goes to the end here. I quite like the ball like that anyway, so I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Because it's flat at the bottom anyway, so I'll now insert another Cylinder 3D And we're just going to try to get the shape for this handle again. I'm just going to delete the top and just close it. So it's more flatter at the top.
I might actually slide it down. delete this because I want to create um, this to be a bit more deeper just like that So we're just going to move it on this. So it's like that, you can make it bigger too, to whatever size you want. And to whatever shape you want basically. So you can scale it bigger or smaller. So I'm just going to have it a bit bigger. So it's like that. And I think it's looking good so far. I created a different shape for this, this part because I preferred this shape better actually. But of course you can have it up going upwards into the side so you can have it basically any angle that you want but I actually like it like this um, so next I am then going to do the coffee beans so with that I'm just going to insert a sphere and just and just see where it takes me so I'm going to do a new folder Just to keep everything together. And we're just going to squish it. Okay, so we're just going to <laughs> we're just going to use the crack brush just to put the line in the middle, just to roughly represent 
a coffee bean. You can go as detailed as you want with this, but I'm just roughly just kind of showing you the idea. And just using the move brush as well, just to shape it a bit more. Because usually coffee beans have the lines in the middle. Um, and they're not, they don't have symmetry, so they're organic, so they don't have any symmetry, so they're like different in shape. Some are fatter than others, so thicker in shape. So it doesn't need to be exactly the same on each side. Use pinch as well. I actually quite like it more open looking because usually that's how they are more opened. Like I said, you can spend more time with this, but I'm just kind of quickly showing you how I would approach it. But obviously, with more time it can look much better. So just roughly like that and we will just insert it at the top and just scale it so it's smaller and just place them inside the coffee grinder machine. And you can just duplicate them make as many as you want and just place them inside just move them to any angle that you want just where you want to place them So you can use gloss or transparency to help you see a bit better, but I'm just going to roughly just place them where I think. You can just put as many as you want.
can just duplicate them and just put more inside to the top. So it's like that, so you can just see them inside, so they're visible, the coffee beans. So I think that's it guys. I'm going to then maybe put some colour and material on this just to finish it off. But I think it looks good so far. Of course you can spend more time to like tweak it all and go over it more in detail and shape things better, shape this a bit more better, shape this. It's just up to yourself really, what you prefer. But this is roughly how I would approach this. Okay, so I think I'm now going to put material on this. I quite like this material, because it reminds me a bit of wood, so that's what I used for this one. So I'll use that for this. And I use some sort of metal, I think, for the handle. So I'm just trying to remember what I use for that one what material, but I can't really remember. Um, you can have it in any material obviously you want in colour. So, full object. And I want to put this one, the drawer to that wooden one. The gradient map. And the coffee writing. And then this will be this one. The object. And we will change this one to this or maybe this one's quite nice actually quite like that one see if there's anything else that we can try Droplet. There, that one. I quite like that one. Okay. Let's change this to a different material.
and I'll change the coffee beans to toy sort of plastic one. So now we will then just put the colour of what we want. For this one, I want to change that material. And just keep that to the silver. And for the coffee beans, we'll go a kind of brownish colour. We're still on that one. Fill over it. Fill in the coffee beans and uh, material and change it to this one. Go a bit of a darker brown, so like that. And then we will then change that one back to the material that I had it at, which was chocolate. And now we'll change this colour change it to a sort of lighter brown I like that colour and this one will change To that colour. I can't remember what material I used for that one but it shouldn't matter. You can put it to any colour or material that you want but that's how it looks anyway. I quite like it actually. I think it looks really good. So remember guys if you have any questions on my designs um, just feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I would love to hear your ideas as well. Also if you have any questions regarding what I'm doing on ZBrush feel free to leave them in the comment section as well. Um, but I think that's us. I think it's time to end this live stream but I think it looks really good. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the stream of me designing a vintage coffee grinder. Um, I'm very happy with how it looks. Um, and on the next live stream, I will be doing um, when I'll, I'll be showing you guys all that printed. I mean, on my next live stream, so I'll print it out and I'll show you the physical piece, so you can see how um, digital design can be 3D printed to a physical design for production. So I'll show you all. Um, the 3D printed design as it's really magical seeing what you design digitally come to life so that's that's really exciting so join me in my next live stream guys where I will design something a bit different which will be a mini bowling tabletop game so that will be something exciting and different from the rest of my live streams that I've done so far but yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. And I hope you all enjoyed this live stream. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.